Ladies and gentlemen, this hearing of the Senate Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality is uh, now resumed. Uh, could I please ask the COMSEC to uh, recognize our resource persons and administer the oath sa mga hindi pa nakapagsumpa sa unang hearing natin? Morning, Madam Chair. Uh, for the record, we'd like to acknowledge our resource persons. From the Department of Foreign Affairs, we have Director Melvin Almunguera, Office of Consular Affairs, Mr. Francis Maynard Malion, Special Assistant. From the National Bureau of Investigation, we have Attorney Janet Francisco, Chief Anti Human Trafficking Task Division, Mr. Emeterio Dongalio, Jr., Chief Special Action Unit, Mr. Joel Tovera, Chief Anti Organized and Transnational Crime Division. From the Philippine National Police, we have Police Brigadier General Alessandro Abella, Women and Children Protection Center, uh, Police Colonel Robin King Sarmiento, PNP Paranaque. From the Bureau of Immigration, we have Attorney Tobias Javier, Deputy Commissioner, Mr. Fortunato Manahan, Intelligence Division, Mr. Grifton Medina, Port Operations Division, Attorney Arvin Santos, Head of Legal. From the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, we have Attorney Maylin Almonte and Attorney Jessa Fernandez from the Legal Department. From our local government units, uh, from the City of Pasay, um, Mayor Imelda Calisto Rubiano is represented by Mary Chris Baliktar, Social Officer 3, and Tisha Anna Botcon, Social Officer 3. We also have Attorney Lorna Kapunan from the Kapunan and Castilla Law Offices. From our business establishments, we have Mr. Sherwin Celestial, President, Avida Towers Aston Condominium Corporation, Makati City, with Attorney Salon Chowa, Corporate Secretary, Mr. Augusto Barameda III, President at Avida Towers, Makati West, together with Attorney Alberto Garcia, Corporate Secretary, and from Go Hotels Parnac, we have Ms. Cindy Castro, Area Operations Manager, together with Attorney Monica Villanueva, Corporate Secretary. Now we would like to request our resource persons to stand up, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I, please state your name, to solemnly swear to tell the truth, the, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee. Thank you. Uh, for the record, Madam Chair, all our source persons answered in the affirmative. Thank you, Comsec, at uh, marami salamat sa lahat ng resource persons. I'll be acknowledging my fellow senators uh, as they arrive later. Noon pong nakaraang linggo, sinamahan ko si Ivy, isang Taiwanese national na naging biktima ng human trafficking ng kanyang mga boss na Chinese nationals naman. She was promised an advertising job Pero natakot siya ng malaman na pogo pala at fly-by-night pa. Tinanggalan siya ng passport, pinatrabaho ng 24 oras kada araw at minolest siya din. In her own words, they touched my body in front of other men and laughed at me. Ang kwento din ni Ivy ay kwento ng marami nating mga kababayan na OFW na inaabuso sa ibang bansa. Ito ngayon sa Pilipinas, kahit saan ka magpunta, maraming mga Chinese nationals at karamihan sa kanila ay mga pogo workers. Okay lang naman kung legal ang lahat at sumusunod sa batas. Pero parang may dala pang krimen tulad ng prostitution, trafficking at illegal detention. Hindi pa nagbabayad ng buwis at dinuduraan pa ang mga kapulisan natin. Gusto kong siya sa atin sa hearing naman na ito kung papaano nakakapasok sa bansa ang napakaraming mga Chinese workers at mga Chinese women na biktima ng human trafficking na nabibiktima na rin ang mga sarili nating mga kababayan. Sentro sa usaping ito ang Bureau of Immigration na may responsibilidad na isecure ang ating national borders. Sabi nila nung nakarang hearing, and I quote, Even the Chinese embassy and some Chinese officials are raising some concerns 
because ang ating mga immigration officers ay napakahigpit. Totoo kaya ito? Kamakailan lamang, mga kaibigan, may nakilalang aking opisina na gustong isiwalat ang isang napakalaking modus na sa tingin ko ay dapat bigyang pansin dito sa hearing na ito. Ang video na ito ay galing sa aming informant. Follow me. Please have a seat first. Ma'am, ito po. Thank you. Follow me. So several follow me videos ito within one day. Sa Naiya One Terminal po ito. Please wait here. Ba? Wala po kayo nang stand. Madami. Wala talaga eh. Okay lang ito. Oo. Sabihin mo pare, huwag sila tumingin sa cellphone. Kaya nga kahapon, naglagay ng cellphone ko huwag kasi mapahamak rin kami. Mas maganda na i-refer nyo naman sa amin dito kami na maglagay. Mas safe sa ating lahat. Paki-follow sa mga kontrol. Yes boss. Tatlo kami doon eh sa counter. Kasi admin. Ay, okay na ito, ma'am. Sige po. Lahat ng counter sa ganyan. Yes, boss. Oo, syempre. Kasi... Bato mo rin lang ito. Alang-alang. Yes, boss. Thank you, ma'am. Yung babaeng nakaupo sa mesa, translator siya. Follow me? You? Here. Please wait. Boss, ang mga Wang Baujin, kasama. Kasama ito? Oo. Meron pa? May isa ko. Ah, isa-isa. O sige, ibaya-dalawa para mabilis. May sumisilip pa ba ng cellphone doon? Wala, wala. Siyempre, ano eh. Daga-daga. Kasama rin ito. O yan, sarag. Akin yan eh, di ba? Sakto sa iyo. Para at least two at a time. Okay. Next is Huwag daw magtitingin ng cellphone Sabi ni Chase Kasi ano Delicate Sit Isa lang boss Check ko na lang para bago kumihi. Chen, ano ba to? Chen, 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 Para, ano? Chen, Chen, Chen. Kasama? Yes, sir. Sige, boss. Thank you. Chen, Chen, Chen. Ay. Unahan ko na kayo, B.I., ha? Huwag niyo pong lolokohin ang mamamayan. Hindi po standard procedure yan. Huwag niyo pong i-deny sa hearing na ito na wala lang yan, no? Bakit parang may VIP escort pa itong mga Chinese nationals na papasok sa ating bansa? Sa katunayan, may guest list nga ng mga Chinese nationals na pumapasok. Ito ang ilang mga screenshots naman sa Viber group ng mga immigration officers. Oh, yan, mahahabang listahan ng mga pangalan, naka-detail kung all flights sa mga specific na petsa dito, 15th January 2019. So, a year ago, more than a year ago, may specific flight numbers, flight time ng bawat pasahero. May mga komento dyan. Baka po nakahold, nakahold na daw po. So ano yan? Ito naman po ay dating Viber Group. Dating Viber Group ng mga immigration officers kung saan pinapadala ang mga pangalan ng paparating na Chinese nationals. Kasama nga ang flight details. Minsan may kasama pang photos. Ayan. 
minsan may kasamang photos pa. Bakit parang ang ating mga immigration officers ay uh, ginawang welcome committee sa mga papasok na pogo workers. Yung mga Pilipino nga, ang hirap-hirap na makapunta sa ibang bansa, pinapahirapan sa mga immigration. Pero ang sa atin, parang karinderyang bukas sa lahat. Sabi nila, maraming dalang investment itong pogo. Pero imbes na investments, bakit parang invasion? Ayon sa aming informant, mas lumakas ang ganitong modus dahil sa libo-libong mga pogo workers na dumarating sa bansa araw-araw. Dati, pinapadala ang mga pangalan at flight details sa isang Viber group, katulad ng ipinakita kanina. Pero dahil minanmanan ito, talam ito ng NBI, ang ginawa sa mga boss nilimitahan ang listahan ng mga Chinese nationals para makaiwas sa NBI investigation. At dahil minanaman na ito, nilimitahan ang listahan sa mga boss. Nakita natin ito sa video kanina. So, hindi na Viber Group sa video kanina, bumalik sa listahan. Ngayon, ang modus daw ay balik Viber ang listahan. Pero secret group chat na at nag expire ang mga messages para mas secured at hindi na mas screenshot. Now, let's follow the money. Ayon sa aming informant, ang bawat Chinese national, marami pogo workers, ay nag apply para sa tourist visas sa iba't ibang consulates natin sa ibang bansa. Pero, dagdag sa kanilang visa fee, 10,000 pesos na service fee. Paniguradong hindi ka masisita sa immigration ng Pilipinas at mayroon ka pang welcome committee. Sa 10,000 iyan, 2,000 nakararating sa ating mga airport. Pinaghahatian sa level ng airport. So, nasaan yung, yung 8,000? Ayon sa aming informant, distributed na bago pa man makarating sa airport. Sa Chinese tour operator, sa kakontrata niyang local tour operator, sa sindikatong magda-downstream sa airport. Boss. During the last hearing, it was shared that 1.8 million Chinese nationals have entered the country in the recent years. This actually tallies roughly with what our informant said, that around 2,000 Chinese nationals enter the country every day. Sabihin na natin, sa 1.8 million, 800,000 ang totoong turista o estudyante nag apply ng totoong work visa. At 1 million ang pumapasok gamit ang sistemang 10,000 peso service fee. Ibig sabihin, general estimate only, 1 billion pesos na ang nabayad sa kickback. At kung sa 10,000 pesos kada pasahero, ay 2,000 pesos ang napunta sa airport operations, that means 200 million pesos kulang-kulang na ang pumapasok sa airport galing sa Chino. Di magiging ganitong kasistematik ang operasyon sa loob ng Bureau of Immigration kung walang padrino ang mga ito. Hindi magiging ganito karapal ang mga illegal na pogo operations kung walang protektor at kumikita ng milyon-milyon. Kaya hindi po tanong kung may kumikita ba sa ganitong operasyon. Ang tanong ay magkano. Ang tanong ay hanggang kanino. Sa bawat immigration officer, nag-average sa 20 to 40,000 pesos ang nakukuhang kickback daw kada buwan. Doble o triple sa take-home pay ng immigration officer 1 na 19 to 20,000 pesos lamang kada buwan. Pero kahit yan, barya lang. Somebody rigged the system, centralized the operations, and made this into a billion peso enterprise. Somebody sold our country's borders for Chinese money. Ngayon, gusto kong tanungin ang BI isa-isa, BI resource persons dito. 
Alam niyo po ba ang pastillas? Attorney Santos, alam niyo po ba ang pastillas? Attorney, alam niyo po ba? Attorney Santos, alam niyo po ba yung pastillas? Yung, uh, opa, Your Honor, it is the uh, sweets. It's a sweet. Attorney Javier, alam niyo po ba ang pastillas? Deputy Commissioner. Madam Chair, I think it's sweets from Bulacan. Ah, getting more details. Sweets from Bulacan. Um, Mr. Manahan, alam niyo po ba ang pastillas? Opo, Madam Chair. Alam niyo ang pastillas. Ngayon, gusto ko pong tanungin specifically ang head ng Ports Operation Division, Mr. Medina. You are like the three other BI resource persons under oath. Kung na po kailan po kayo naging Ports Operation Division head? Late um, 2018 po. Mga around, uh, late, uh, around November. Late 2018, so November Akala ko po August last year, so even earlier pala po, November 2018. So lastly po, from the BI spokespersons under oath today, alam niyo po ba ang pastillas? Uh, it's a delicacy, yung sweet delicacy that uh, uh, um, usually from the province or ganyan po. So a sweet delicacy from the province, sabi kanina ni Deputy Commissioner Javier from Bulacan. Meron po akong gustong ipakita sa inyo. Ito po yung totoong naging pastillas. Payout pastillas. Nakasulat po dito sa Viber screenshot na ito. Good morning po, 7th and 8th ARR pastillas. Period covered, November 15 to 28, 2018. Total IO, I guess, immigration officer share, 1,756,000 pesos. Less fixed fee. Fixed fee, 25,000 pesos. Editors o A4, 24,000 pesos. MISD, Yani Maxi. IO Basic Share, 33,500 pesos. Total SLVL, I suppose sick and vacation leaves. Deduction, 69,000 pesos. Distributed to IOs with perfect attendance. Yun po yung kasunod plus 2,000 pesos for perfect attendance. Meron pang less 500 pesos for Christmas party. Merry Christmas po. Thank you. At uh, pa-endorse po ng HX sa SR. Salamat. Mga sir and ma'am, good morning. Meron good news. Nasa MISD lang ako sa arrival care of, at may pangalang dyan, R.G. Garcia Ralph. October 25 to 31, cut-off yan. Yung mga sobren nyo po, nasa BCIU office endorsed by same person. Boss niya P, VIP ni VCR. Screenshots po at photos ng pastillas na hindi lamang sweets na galing Bulacan o ibang probinsya. Sophisticated nitong pastillas, ano po? Tinanong ko, bakit pastillas ang tawag? Dati daw kasi, wala pong mga sobreng nakita natin dun sa naunang photo. So, nilalagay noon sa band paper at nirorolyo na parang pastillas. Ito ngayon, nasa envelope na. Pero dati, ito ay nirorolyo sa band paper. Ngayon, mas professional na. May sobre parang legit na pasweldo May bonus, pag perfect attendance, may, at meron pa palang palunch mula sa Chinese. Ano kayang dessert, no? Pastillas din po ba? Alam nyo po, paborito ko rin po yung pastillas, pero hindi yung ganitong uri ng pastillas sa loob ng Bureau of Immigration. According to my informant, may specific na tihan, hatian pa ang pastillas na ito. Sabi ko nga kanina, 10,000 pesos na binabayad ng bawat Chinese national na pumapasok sa Pilipinas. 2,000 pesos ang nakukuha sa airport. 
para mapadulas ang pagpapasok at pagdaan sa immigration counters. Yung 2,000 pesos na iyon, paghahati-hatian pa ng ganito. So may ano talaga, may template talaga. Shall apply to all na iya terminals and shifts 2K per P per person entering. So DIS o yung duty immigration supervisor, I suppose, sa 2,000 pesos, 23.5% ang kaniya, 470 pesos. IO, immigration officer, at 32.5%, 650 pesos ang kaniya. Sa TCEU, Travel Central and Enforcement Unit, 14%, 280 pesos. BCIU, Border Control and Intelligence Unit, so ito po ba sa ilalim ng Intelligence Division, Mr. Manahan, 12% or 240 pesos. OPS, Operations, o yung mga admin at clerical workers natin sa BI, 13%, 260 pesos. And to round it up, yung terminal head, TH, 5%, 100 pesos. Let's look at these different airport units and magkano natatanggap. Yan po, yung paghahati-hatian ng 2,000 pesos. May I ask authorities from our airport, are you aware of this? Aware po ba kayo dito? Um, 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 this is the first time I saw this particular uh, um, rundown of uh, amounts and um, I was uh, chosen by uh, Secretary Guevara and Commissioner Morente to instill change at the airports and uh, what I could say um, We instilled reforms and uh, uh, took some officers away from uh, the airports. They were reassigned. Some of them were charged. And we installed uh, measures to combat uh, uh, corruption and these kinds of activities, uh, not only in the arrival and also in the departure um, gates. Uh, I know it was a hard task that was given to me, and but I took up the challenge, and uh, it entailed a lot of uh, um, attacks against my person, and uh, but we continue to make strides, and um, uh, what I could say is we do not tolerate these kinds of activities. Um, people would uh, bear me out by instilling uh, important uh, reforms in the immigration airports. When I started uh, late uh, 2018, uh, I started uh, uh, taking uh, heads or uh, reshuffling, not only reshufflings, but uh, um, 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 Mr. Medina, according to my informant, ongoing pa rin ito hanggang ngayon. Very recent po yung ipinakita ko sa committee ito na video. So kailan ba talaga nating ilalabas iyan? You have been uh, in charge since November 2018, more yes, than a year. Yes, only things are only two things, sir, sirs from the BI are possible right now, no? Nagmama ang maangan kayo, pero alam ninyo ang nangyayari. O talagang ignorante kayo sa pangyayaring ito, sa ginagawa ng inyong mga underlings. So, either you are complicit or you are negligent. And I don't know which is worse. So again, could I ask the main office, alam nyo ba ito that this is going on right now under all our noses? While you think about that, sir, I'd like you to take all of us another look at these Viber screenshots with the names of Chinese citizens entering our country. Totoo po ba itong mga screenshot na ito o peke po ba ito? 
very recent, sir. January 15, 2020. Peke po ba ito o totoo? And what legal or logical explanation could there be for names of arriving passengers to be given in advance to immigration officers? Ma'am, I, it's the first time I saw this, but what I'm trying to surmise, because with regard to the visa upon arrival, uh, it's not processed at the airports. So, hindi po ito VUA? Ito po ay tourist visas? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, what I'm surmising, it is VUA. Or, um, if... These are ordinary tourist visas na ayon sa informant ko, binayaran ng service fee na 10,000 pesos para madaling makapasok, no questions asked, sa ating immigration counters. So, peke po ba ito or totoong mga listahan? It's, it's the first time I saw this particular... Uh, it's the first time you've seen it. Yung mga pangalan po na nating mga Pilipinong manlalakbay, na survivor din po ba iyon pagparating tayo? Pag, alimawa, pagdating ko sa Pilipinas, because I've never seen what we just viewed now sa video. Pagdating ko po ba sa Pilipinas, pangalan ko po na survivor din po ba iyon? No, ma'am. Oh. So, uh, and I will subpoena the documents... Uh, so that we can see kung VUA nga ba talaga o hindi, gaya ng sinosurmise nyo, yes. o tourist visas, gaya ng alam yes. ko sa informant ko, itong mga mahahabang listahan araw-araw na mga arriving Chinese nationals. And if I ask to see po the official documentation of arriving passengers on the dates yeah. in these Viber chats, would I be able to find matches? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, as well. I, I would. Because, and if there are matches, mga ngahulugan po na itong mga screenshot na ito didn't just come out of thin air. And therefore, as chair of this committee, I am uh, ordering, I'm, I am subpoenaing the documents of arriving passengers on the dates of these fiber shots para mapatunayan natin kung ito po ba ay mga totoo talaga o mga gawa-gawa lang, mga peke. And kung talagang tourist visas ang hawak nitong mga arriving nationals or yung sinasabi nyong baka vua sila, yes. which I seriously doubt. Now, sir, I asked for information in the first hearing uh, on the following. The numbers of Chinese single females traveling alone for the first time and their visas entering the country. And numbers of Chinese single females traveling alone for the first time, leaving the country. Uh, is this information already here this morning? I have mom, the information. I'm just going to um, have it prepared because uh, our arrival cards is really not in the custody of BI. Uh, another uh, agency collect this. And then what I did is I, during, after... Which after, agency, sir? Um... Uh, Department of Tourism po. So, kasi po sila po ang provide ng uh, uh, arrival cards. They are the ones who, this is a MOA between BI and uh, DOT, PSA, to help us in printing uh, several millions of the arrival cards. So, the design and everything. And then, sila po ang nagkukulik ng data. So, every day, um, we collect it and within a week's time, three days to seven days, the Department of Tourism gets the um, uh, arrival cards. And then I communicated with them after our hearing to get the particular data that you wanted. And then they were able to come up. Uh, however, yung single po kasi wala pong nakalagay dun sa arrival cards po natin na to indicate the the status, only the sex, or the gender, um, male and female, and the name, and some of the address, those things. But they were able to generate the particular uh, age bracket. At first, they said that uh, the age bracket that they use is uh, in accordance with PSA standards, the 15 to 19, uh, 20 to 24, 25 to 29. But I said, Maybe you could uh, generate, since nandun naman yung birthday, 
noong 18 to 25 and they were able to come up and then I'm just uh, going to submit it uh, this morning po. Well, sir, I asked for that data at the first hearing two weeks ago. Yes, Pat. So I hope you can give it to the committee yes, within the day kasi yes. masyado namang unbelievably slow. Ma'am, it's 88,974 uh, female, 18 to 25 years old. Pero hindi po naka-indicate kung single or married. Please have that data with yes, my committee within I could the give day. It this morning. Entering and departing the country. Ma'am, with regard to the departure, uh, wala po kaming data sa departure kasi ang ang rule po is for foreign nationals hindi po sila nagsusulat ng departure cards nagsusulat lang po sila ng arrival cards um, we have to find a way to close that data gap kung gusto nating siguruhin na hindi na re recycle lamang yung mga either pina traffic or ini illegally recruit whether tulad ng mga chin ng kasama ni Karina or tulad ni Ivy mula sa Taiwan. Before I leave um, this particular question, gusto kong uh, balikan si Attorney Javier. So sir, after viewing our video, aware po ba kayo dyan sa pastillas operation na hindi manufacturing ng sweets sa Bulacan? Are you aware of that pastillas operation? No, Madam Chair. It's the first time I hear about the uh this uh, so-called modus operandi done at the airport. And uh, it's the first time also I, I see that uh, sharing arrangement uh, allegedly uh, being perpetrated at the airport. And um, well, well, for the record, Madam Chair, uh, based on what my inquiry uh, from our personal division, there's been changes in the airport. In fact, the uh, travel control enforcement unit head was uh, replaced uh, last year, I think, uh, mid of last year. And uh, so, uh, so it validates the statement of Mr. Benid, Mr. Medina. And uh, secondly, Mr. Medina has been given full authority at the airport by, the, by Commissioner Morente to uh, institute changes at the airport. And uh, there has been uh, personal changes there, uh, especially um, in the uh, uh, supervisory level. Uh, but uh, I guess uh, based on uh, what I, uh, what we heard today, there should be, uh, I would be talking to Commissioner Morente to convene the board commissioners and take appropriate action in view of the, uh, of the uh, video uh, just uh, shown uh, this morning, Madam Chair. I suppose, uh, Deputy Commissioner Javier, that's a good small first step dahil sabi nyo nga, pinalitan nyo na yung TCEU nyo dati, but that TCEU is still in the hatian table. It's a computerized table. There's a template, ini-input lang yung share ng bawat immigration officer at the airport. Kasama pa rin ang TCEU uh, as of uh, these days. Just for the record, one last time, gusto kong tanungin ulit lahat ng mga BI um, resource persons natin. And could you just please state for the record, yes or no, are you aware of the Pastillas operation, Attorney Santos? I am not aware, Mr. Uh, Your Honor. Attorney Javier, are you aware of the Pastillas operation? No, ma'am. Mr. Manahan, are you aware of the Pastillas operation? No, Madam Chair, I'm not aware po. And Mr. Medina, are you aware of the Pastillas operation? No, so, sa changes po sa airport, hindi nyo po natunugan itong Pastillas operation. Hindi talaga kapanipaniwala. And I hate to have to say this to resource persons, but please don't lie. You are under oath. I am reminding you once more. So, um, is it true dun sa isang batay, dun sa isang photo that even lunch meals ng ating mga immigration officers used to be provided by Chinese companies? Mr. Medina? No, um, ma'am. When I took over, uh, immigration officers 
uh, would chip in money for lunch or for uh, dinner uh, because uh, pag yung chef po nila, if in case um, merong occasion or may birthday, they're going to have a chip in money. But uh, if what is surmised there is that uh, it is uh, provided by a Chinese travel agency or what, uh, I'm not uh, aware. And I would not uh, tolerate that, ma'am. Well, thank you for that tip kung yung Chinese companies ay Chinese travel agencies. Actually, uh, ang nag-ship in talaga dito mga kumpanyang Chino, natigil lang recently dahil lang sa NCOV scare, sa COVID-19 scare. But these are two photos uh, received from my informant. And you really see nothing irregular with the guardians of our border being fed by that largest population group entering our border. Hindi ba ito kahiyahiya sa atin? Yes, ma'am. That's why um, we do. We would not tolerate these kinds of activities. That is why uh, we are um, instituting reforms. I know it's going to be a very hard uh, battle for us, for me. But uh, I'm I'm trying my best, ma'am, to to curb uh, corruption. Unfortunately, I don't think. Uh, collectively, no, kayo are trying hard enough. Kasi bakit hindi kayo aware, sabi nyo, sa pastillas operation, eh kung hindi kayo aware, di umano sa malaking operasyon na iyon, so hindi kagulat-gulat na sasabihin niyo hindi kayo aware sa ganitong pagpapakain ng mga Chinese companies or travel um, agencies. And um, According to our informant, who I am preparing to present to the committee, um, this food system is ongoing until literally two weeks ago. Uh, kasabay actually nung pag-suspend nyo ng pag-issue ng uh, VUA, pero dahil sa NCOV o COVID-19 scare. Ganun din po ang timing nitong pag-suspend ng pagpapakain ng mga uh, kumpanyang Chino sa ating uh, BI personnel. But you know, I have to say, uh, uh, for the record, that I sympathize with our Bureau of Immigration uh, personnel, our personnel. I know they work long hours with very little official take-home pay, lalo na pagkatapos tanggalin yung kabuang overtime pay noon. At sa totoo lang, katiting lang ang nakukuha nila na extra. The lion's share goes to the bosses. And that's what, that's what makes me angry as chair of this committee. Na pinapapasok nyo ng bureau, kapalit ng pera, ang mga umaabuso, kina Karina at kina Miss Ivy. And if this is proven true, you will be liable under Section 3B of the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act for receiving monetary benefit in exchange of facilitating the entry of Chinese nationals within our borders. At hindi lang yan. Maaring ding liable, ang mga liable, sa ilalim ng Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act, RA 9208, Sections 5D and E, which penalize the facilitation of ingress or egress through our borders for human trafficking. Bago natin iwan yung uh, mga video at photo evidence na ito. Kilala niyo po ba yung mga nasa video kanina? Yung immigration personnel na ito, yung translator na babae sa tabi niya. Kilala niyo po ba yung mga taong nasa video? Um, this particular guy, uh, I already saw him, but he was removed from that particular position when I took over. So he's still within the Bureau of Immigration? Yes, he's still at the NAIA Terminal 1? Not. Um, we do reshuffles every 45 days or every three months. But uh, his position before was TCEU, but he's not now with TCEU. But he's still within the Bureau. Kahit nabahagi siya ng ganyang pastillas operation 
na nagpapapasok sa backroom ng mga entering Chinese nationals na nasa listahan dun sa computer ng ating Bureau of Immigration. Pwedeng asistihin yung entering Chinese national nung translator na nasa tabi niya at pinag-uusapan nila yung iba't ibang aspeto ng pastillas operation na iyan. Winawarningan pang isa't isa na huwag kayong titingin sa cellphone nyo kasi delikado, etc. May daga-daga. Do you recognize any of the other people in the video? Did you recognize any of them earlier? Hindi ko po nakita yung ibang mga um, uh, personalities. I think this guy, I remember. Uh, I removed him from uh, the TCEU. He's removed from TCEU, but he is still within the Bureau of Immigration. Kaya siguro hindi nyo natutunogan yung ganitong pastillas operation. Di umano, hindi nyo natutunogan. Kaya siguro hanggang ngayon, until at least two weeks ago, tuloy ang pagpapakain sa ating Bureau of Immigration personnel ng mga kumpanya ng ibang bansa. Right now, I'd like to move on to the PNP and the NBI. Uh, bago pala ako magtanong, gusto kong kilalanin ang uh, NBI. Dahil sa kwento sa amin ni Ivy, Miss Ivy mula sa Taiwan, tinulungan talaga siya ng NBI operatives. So, mabuhay po kayo uh, para doon. Ano naman po, ma'am, kayo po ba magsasagot para sa NBI, Attorney Francisco? Or will it be Attorney Dongalio? Uh, Madam Chair, yes. um, I was not designated as the focal person for the NBI. Uh, it depends po sa mga questions. Uh, nandito Sino po po yung senior sa inyo na nandito ngayon? Si Attorney Sir, Tovera po. Attorney sir. Tovera, thank you. Attorney Tovera, ano po yung mga telltale signs na ang isang condo or hotel ay ginagamit para sa prostitution? Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair and uh, my co-resource uh, persons. Ayon po sa aming experience, uh, dahil ang NBI po ay uh, divided into so many divisions, doon po sa akin uh, na pinamumuna yung Anti-Organized and Transnational Crimes Division. Yung mga telltale signs po na nadiscovery natin ay yung uh, uh, very frequent po yung uh, in and out of uh, Chinese nationals. May mga nagsasabi rin po doon sa malapit sa hotels like taxi drivers na parang market, wet market ang isang hotel na yan. Kasi maghatid sila ng isang customer, after an hour lalabas, may darating na naman na ibang customers. And uh, ito po ay uh, nangyari uh, during our first uh, weeks of operation last year. Unfortunately, this year, nag-evolve na po yung mga syndicate uh, uh, spearheading the prostitution uh, business. Um, for, uh, ginagawa po nila ay nagpapabook sa isang hotel Kung pupunta na po yung ating uh, post or customer doon, sasabihin nila, pumunta kayo sa ibang hotel. Pero may booking na po yun, ma'am. And uh, bihira na po kaming maka-aresto uh, ng maraming uh, operators and the uh, pimps kasi limited na po yung uh, tao na kanilang dinedeploy. Depende, depende po sa customer, kung isa lang po siya, bibigyan lang po siya ng isang babae. And most of the time, uh, to uh, avoid the uh, apprehension, they will just send the uh, photos of the uh, uh, sex uh, victims, the uh, lady uh, prostitutes, on the cell phones para po doon mamili po yung customer. Pag nakapamili po yung uh, customer, that's the time na sasabihin nila, pumunta ka sa hotel na ito at itong room na ito. Wet market talaga, no? Talipa pa. That's so, the term of the... Uh, yes, Opo, yung mga, yung mga Viber at saka... At saka WeChat 
screenshots ng unang hearing na bumibiktima sa mga trafficked and prostituted Chinese and other women, pati mga Pilipina tulad ni Karina. So talagang parang bagay, parang gamit, tinuturing, produkto yung mga babae. Later, I will also ask the PNP kung ano pa yung nakikita yung mga telltale signs na ginagamit sa ganitong prostitution yung mga condominiums or mga, mga hotel. Pero tanungin ko rin muna po sa NBI din, Pwede nyo rin po bang uh, i-discuss sa komite yung investigation nyo sa BI at sa mga airports kaugnay nitong uh, prostitution, trafficking, or illegal recruitment? In my case, uh, Your Honor, I always coordinate with uh, the Bureau of Immigration whenever uh, we conduct uh, an operation. Other matters pertaining to the influx of uh, Chinese nationals in the country we have our NBI Anti-Human Trafficking Division and the International Airport Investigation Division in the International Airport, Your Honor. To which I am not uh, privy to whatever uh, record or findings uh, they have, Your Honor. Thank you, Attorney Tovera. Um, General Abelia, kayo po ba magsasalita sa PNP? Muli? All right, so Police Colonel Sarmiento, ano pa po yung mga tanda na ginagamit ang isang hotel or condominium uh, para sa prostitution. Dahil tulad po ng NBI, ang PNP rin ay nagsasagawa ng mga raid, rescues, at arrests mula pa nung nakaraang taon. Maganda nga umaga po, ma'am. Uh, sa experience po ng Paranaque City Police, uh, usually itong mga parokyano ng mga ganitong uh, establishmento ay hinayahatid ng mga van Ang nagbibigay po sa amin ng mga information nito is uh, karaniwan yung mga security guards at saka yung mga barangay officials. So sa uh, napansin nila, uh, although po yung mga buildings usually, mga transient po talaga yung mga Chinese na nandoroon, pero ang napansin po ng mga security guards at mga barangay officials, eh, hindi, ano eh, hindi regular na pumupunta ron yung mga parokyano. Uh, pagka napansin nila na iba-iba uh, yung laman, uh, hindi na nila nakikilala, uh, yun po ang nagbigay ng timbre sa amin na ito po ay meron ng uh, operation ng ganong klaseng uh, aktibidad. At sa tingin niyo po, Colonel Sarmiento, alam po ba ng mga hotel na to, ng mga condominium na to, na meron ng sinasagawang prostitution sa loob ng premises nila? Hindi ko po matiyak ma'am pero palagay ko po uh, hindi naman magiging kaila dahil uh, uh, may mga security guards din sila ron, may mga maintenance uh, crew sila na maaaring magbigay ng uh, informasyon sa management. Sa NBI po, Attorney Tovera, sa tingin po ba ng Bureau ay alam nitong mga establishments yung sinasagawang krimen sa loob nila? Uh, we uh, conducted further investigation on, our, on the areas we uh, we raided, Your Honor, but uh, they denied having uh, knowledge of uh, the uh, prostitution uh, den that is uh, uh, being converted by the uh, syndicate. However, we uh, are of the opinion that they had knowledge because they have all the uh, means, they have all the uh, time to check what's going on in their um, hotels. In fact, uh, they were surprised when uh, ever we conduct raids, uh, they're denying at first that uh, there is an ongoing uh, prostitution activities there. But the moment we opened the door because uh, our uh, asset is already there, they're so, to their surprise, that uh, uncooperative uh, uh, mode of theirs becomes cooperative to the point of uh, opening all the uh, doors of that hotel. We even uh, discovered uh, a hotel in Makati wherein the uh, syndicate occupied the whole floor of that uh, uh, hotel. Likewise, in Las Piñas, we raided uh, a condominium-type uh, building where the uh, prostitution uh, activities is being uh, conducted or being done in two stories of that uh, condominium building, Your Honor. Alin pong mga hotel o at condominium ito na nagde-deny pero hindi nyo pinaniniwalaan tapos biglang nasusurprise sila at biglang nagiging cooperative? 
uh, may mga yung hotel po na yan ay uh, itong your hotel. Yes, your honor. Uh, minsan po yung uh, na mga na din po ng mga kasamahan namin uh, nasa report po na sinabmit ng aming uh, pamunuhan dito po sa committee nito. The, uh, yung sinabmit na ng mga pangalan ng mga hotel at condominium, so nasa aming committee na, can you state for the record aling mga condo at hotels ito? In my case, Your Honor, we uh, raided the uh, condominium hotel in uh, Las Piñas. Uh, uh, it was occupied by a, a uh, Chinese group. Actually, we are conducting an investigation on that. Uh, we issued subpoena. Uh, they will be uh, scheduled to appear in our office uh, next week. Uh, in uh, Makati, we uh, raided in particular uh, the St. Giles. St. Giles? St. Giles. St. Giles Hotel. Um, we also raided the uh, Red Planet. Your Hotel. In uh, Pasay, we uh, raided the uh, uh, Maidas, and I believe uh, some of my colleagues here raided also various hotels, like am I? Can I? Like Okada, uh, other KTVs uh, in Metro Manila, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Attorney Tovera. Interesting, yung ibang mga pangalan, no, talagang konektado sa online and other forms of gambling. Um, at this point, gusto ko munang uh, i-acknowledge mga additional resource persons. Thank you for your presence. Uh, OIC ng City Social Welfare Development Office ng Paranaque City, si Ms. Marisa Neri Escalera. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. At yung head agent, chief ng special task force ng NBI, uh, Mr. Gerald Heralde. Salamat po, sir, sa tulong nyo kay Ms. Ivy. So, uh, something deeply appreciated uh, by, the, by my committee. Um, mamaya, tatanungin ko rin po yung ating mga ilang resource persons na nandito from the hotels and condominiums uh, sector. Sayang, may mas marami po kaming inimbita, but thank you dun sa mga, those who actually showed up. Pero gusto ko munang tanungin yung mga taga PAGCOR. Um, Will it be uh, Attorney Fernandez or Attorney Almonte to speak for the corporation? Uh, Attorney good, Almonte. Good morning, Your Honor. It will depend good morning. Um, upon the quest to the question, Your Honor. Kayo po? Um, it will depend. Your it Honor. will depend on the question. But yes. sino po ang senior sa inyo sa corporation? Um, same pay grade, Your Honor. A same pay grade. Pay grade. <laughs> All right. But since you took the mic first, uh, please uh, indulge me. No? Um, ano pong hearing naman ng Senate Committee on Labor? Chaired by Senator Joel Villanueva, uh, it was stated that there are 59 PAGCO registered POGOs and 229 registered POGO service providers. So, accurate pa rin po itong data na ito? Um, um, as of now, Your Honor, we have um, a total of 60 POGOs and 236 service providers. Alright, so parehong nadagdagan ng kaunti. Um, ang sabi din ninyo noon, nung sa hearing na iyon, mayroong mga 700 Chinese fugitives within these legal pogos. So within these 59 or 60 PAGCO registered pogos. Accurate pa rin po ba itong data na ito? So this was taken from the minutes of that hearing of the Committee on Labor. Um, Madam Chair, I believe it's the data from the Bureau of Immigration, the fugitive the fugitives from the uh, Ill illegal online gaming and licensed online gaming companies. Uh, but this one was uh, supposedly 700 Chinese fugitives within legal pogos. Tama pa po ba yung, could I ask the BI, tama pa po ba yung data na iyon? 700 fugitives within legal pogos? Um, Madam Chair, yung uh, fugitive uh, status po, um, it's because yung Chinese government, Chinese embassy, canceled their uh, passports. So they were declared as uh, fugitives and undocumented. So itong 700, undocumented pa rin, tapos andito pa rin sa mga legal pogos. 
Um, they were arrested on a series of uh, BI initiated operations. Uh, yung malaki yung last year, yung um, the 300 something and the 500 uh, um, arrested subjects, na deport na po yung mga Chinese nationals. We still have uh, one big operation that was conducted last uh, December, December 19 to be exact. It's uh, 342. They're still awaiting for deportation, uh, Madam Chair. So yung 700 lahat or 800 kasi sabi nyo 300 and 500 lahat na deport na. Pero may bagong 342 na nasa custody pa rin ng Bureau. Hindi po lahat, siguro mga naisa, yung sa 300 and the 500 po, mga 90% po na deport na. Pero the 342, all the 342 are still here awaiting for the deportation po, Madam Chair. Understood. Back to Pagor po, uh, Attorney Fernandez. May, so ito yung pinag-uusapan natin yung mga legal, mga Pagor registered po go. So in the magnitude of, uh, of about, sabi nyo, ngayon 236. Do you also have an estimate of the number of illegal POGOs? Right now, ma'am, we don't have the data of the illegal online gaming operators. Uh, we are, we have a mutual cooperation agreement with the National Bureau of, In of Investigation and the Philippine National Police, and we are supposed to receive information from them on the number of illegal operators that they have apprehended po. Interesting lang kasi attorney, no, na 60 POGOs ang legal ayon sa pagkaalam ng PAGCOR, pero dole, lumabas din sa Senate Committee on Labor Hearing, dole inspected 147 POGOs. Uh, so, presumably legal. So, ayon dun sa media reports. Mukhang kailangang mag-square ang data ng mga ng mga departments natin para full regulatory powers ang ma-exercise. Actually, ma'am, we only have 60 Philippine offshore gaming operators, operations licensees. However, we have 236 service providers who are servicing these licensees. So it's only uh, it's actually accurate that DOLE could inspect more than 300 sites. So, ibig sabihin yung iba dito ay POGO proper, yung iba ay service providers dun sa mga POGO. Yes, ma'am. Actually, we only have 10 Philippine-based, Philippine offshore gaming operators, and the 50 are foreign-based operators. So, the 236 service providers are all domestic corporations located here in the Philippines. All right, I might have to get back to you on that uh, a little later. Matanong lang quickly sa NBI at sa sa PNP, kayo ba yung mga institusyon nyo, meron na kayong mga bilang na mga illegal POGOs? I uh, believe uh, we have, uh, Your Honor, uh, on the basis of the raids conducted by uh, different divisions of the NBI. So sa pagkaalam po ng NBI, ilan po yung mga illegal POGOs na iyon? I'm not, uh, I cannot provide the exact number uh, as of the moment, Your Honor, but uh, I will uh, relate to the management uh, for the submission of whatever data this Honorable Committee uh, will require. At ang PNP po ba, Colonel Sarmiento, maybe, or General Abelia, meron na po kayong bilang ng illegal POGOs? Uh, as of now po, ma'am, uh, ahanapin pa po namin, ma'am, kung ilan ko. Pero balik po sa pagkor, <clears throat> totoong meron ng mga illegal na pogo o yung tinatawag na colorum? Yes, ma'am. It's possible po. At kung gayon, kung totoong may colorum na pogo at sila may mga empleyado, therefore hindi nyo na monitor hindi na monitor ng sino man sa government agencies natin, uh, walang database sa mga empleyado ito. So totoo po, may ganung klaseng mga tao dito ngayon. Yes, ma'am. So kung may noon, uh, 700 Chinese fugitives, 90% na deport na dati, 700 to 800, at ngayon may mga 342 na sa custody pa ng uh, BI, at ito within the legal pogos lang, lahat, ni hamak na posible na mayroong mas marami pang nasa kolorum na pogo, di po ba? Mga illegal pogo workers, Chinese fugitives. It's possible po. It's possible. And dahil hindi na nga po natin, hindi naman sa atin, yes, Mr. Manahan, you have some input on this. Um, 
Madam Chair, for clarification lang po, yung the big um, mass arrest po ang nangyari last year, it's not related to Pogo, it's a uh, um, illegal uh, telecommunication fraud. The the reason, which is uh, the 342 that was uh, um, conduct, uh, where the operation was conducted December 19, it was uh, coordinated with PADCOR uh, for the arrest of the 342 illegally working under the um, online, telecommunication online business, uh, telecommunication fraud po. Telecom fraud na hindi online gambling. Um, it's, it needs to be established po, pero it's more of telecommunication fraud. Well, and, sir, if it needs to be established, I mean, gano ba kahirap sabihin na Togo ito, lalo na umuusbong siya, di ba? Ma Di, mahirap bang sabihin na online gambling ito? Kung telecom fraud, medyo malapit na pwedeng-pwedeng maging pinsan o kapatid ng Pogo o Pogo mismo. Um, Madam Chair, the, the, the company uh, is uh, um, under license of PAGCOR but there's not, there's not, they're, not supposed to be, uh, they're not supposed to operate yet. So we coordinated the matter with the PAGCOR so it, it's like a joint operation po. So, Attorney Fernandez, ito po bang 342 na mas recently na aresto? Telecom fraud daw? So, ano sila? Pre-Pogo, ganon? Preparing to operate online gambling? Actually, uh, this is the situation. So, we have granted a license to a certain applicant, and then they have six months to operate. So, they have six months to prepare for their operation. And then, uh, they request, this certain company requested for, the, for an additional month to prepare. So, we gave them the permission to extend for another month. However, it was found that um, even though they asked for a month to prepare, they have already commenced operating. So, um, and it was found in that company that there were, I think, telecommunication fraud and not online gambling. Uh, some, somehow, they may be masking. Somehow, they may be masking. So, legalism lang sabihin na telecom fraud when actually humingi pa nga sila ng one-month extension para makapag-pogo operation. So, these 340, uh, 342 would still practically fit the bill na Chinese fugitives within legal pogos or soon-to-be pogos. At saka, atyari, akala ko po ba tumigil ng mag-issue ang pogo ng bagong franchise, uh, ang PAGCO rather, ng bagong pogo franchises. Winelcome pa ng uh, Beijing, ng kanilang foreign ministry. So how come we are still um, uh, entertaining requests para sa one-month extension bago makapag-pogo operations pa rin? No, ma'am. We have already given the license before the uh, before the moratorium, but they are given six months to prepare to f operate. So they're already licensed even before the moratorium. Kung po matatapos yung six-month extension period after the moratorium? Ma'am, let's say this company was licensed in May 2019. So, dapat po, sa December, dapat po sa November. And then they were given another month on December 2019 to start their operations. At ngayon, Pebrero na. So, dapat hinding-hindi na pwede talaga. Yes, ma'am. So, balik lang dun sa mga empleyado, no? So, dahil hindi na ma-monitor yung mga empleyado, particularly ng mga illegal pogos. So, hindi lang Chinese fugitives ang problema, pero yung mga employees na yon sa mga kolorum na pogo, they're more vulnerable. Tama po ba? Hindi uh, sila protektado ng batas natin. They're more vulnerable to trafficking, especially the women, uh, illegal pogo workers. They fall in the cracks of the system. Um, is this correct? Yes, ma'am. It's possible po. Yes, attorney. It's possible and it actually happened precisely uh, doon kay Miss Ivy, galing Taiwan, yung, siya yung Taiwanese national na dumulog sa opisina ko, uh, her Pogo employers were not registered. They had no authority to recruit, yet they employed her and they subjected her to various forms of abuse. Uh, kung hindi siya nakahanap ng paraan na dumulog sa NBI, she would be among the statistics na under the radar pa rin uh, nung kanilang operasyon. So, balik po ako sa ating mga 
uh, representatives ng hotels and uh, uh, condominiums. Um, who would like to respond first? Would it be from Aviva Towers, Makati West, or from or from Go Hotels? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and uh, just for the record, kaya po namin kayo inimbita because uh, you are both, along with others, in the PNP list submitted uh, to my committee. So maybe let's begin first with the Avida uh, Hotel. Okay. Yung nasa list was the Avida Aston Hotel. Are, uh, can you speak for the Avida Aston Hotel? Yes, Madam Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Attorney, sorry, Attorney Chowa. Yes. Um, alam niyo po ba, o hindi niyo ba alam, na ginagamit for prostitution activities yung hotel ninyo? Uh, hindi po, Madam Chairman. Hindi niyo alam, pero na-identify po kayo sa hearing and uh, nasa listahan nga po ng PNP list submitted to the committee. What precautions... If any, do you take to ensure that your hotel is not used or even inadvertently used for pogo-related prostitution? Uh, Madam, um, yung sa amin po is a condominium. Um, with the, what happened, uh, uh, yung board po, <clears throat> yung uh, condominium corporation, uh, ang measures po nila is immediately nag-implement po kami ng uh, RFID and biometrics. And uh, we are also um, increasing the CCTV visibility in the premises po. Are you aware, uh, Attorney Ochoa, well, I presume you are a lawyer, that in the Anti-Trafficking Act of 2003, it's a crime to knowingly lease or sublease use or allow to be used any house, building, or establishment for the purpose of promoting trafficking in persons? Are you aware of this, sir? Uh, your Honor, uh, correct ko lang po. Ako po si Mr. Sherwin Celestial. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm reading the wrong... Ano. Yes, so Attorney Chowa is the one to your left. Yes, pa. Yes, so Mr. Celestial, aware po ba kayo? Uh, aware po ba si, uh, kayo yes, ni Attorney Madam. Chowa? You are yes, aware. Yes, Pag paulit-ulit po yung raid at di matigil-tigil, and I'm sure sa industry na you, you are updated sa nangyayari sa sector ninyo. Since at least August of last year, laman ng balita, yung mga raids ng NBI, ng PNP, rescues and arrests ng mga traffic and prostituted women and girl children and foreign nationals. Uh, so, pag paulit-ulit, pero di matigil-tigil, siguro naman, we can presume knowledge on the part of the building owner or administrator. Is that generally accepted sa hotel and condominium industry na kung may building na paulit-ulit yung raid, pero tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung prostitution sa loob na alam ng owners and administrators? Uh, wala po kaming control uh, especially sa condominium kasi po uh, yung uh, yung uh, mga unit po is uh, uh, nagpaparenta po diyan yung mga owner po eh so ang sinasubmit lang po sa amin is yung kanilang lease agreement but i guess since nag-institute na rin kayo ng mga precautions sabi niyo RFID CCTV biometrics that this uh, phenomenon, whether in your condominium or in other condominiums, other hotels, has uh, concerned or even alarmed you enough para nag-take nag, uh, nag action kayo to, to be as accountable as you can be. And syempre, yung owners ng mga units na yon ay dapat accountable din. Uh, could I ask now... Um, Go Hotel, ang nasa listahan po ng PNP submitted uh, to my committee ay yung particularly yung Go Hotel sa Baklaran, Parañaque. At Parañaque. Who will speak for Go Hotels? Ms. Castro, do I read that correctly? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Uh, alam nyo po ba o hindi nyo ba alam na ginagamit para sa prostitution activities yung Go Hotel sa Baklaran, Parañaque? Honestly, ma'am, hindi 
So, honestly, hindi nyo po alam, kaya lang nga, kasama po iyon sa PNP list submitted sa committee ko. And therefore, what precautions, if any, have you taken to ensure that uh, this Go Hotel in Baclaran, Paranaque, is not used or further used for pogo-related prostitution? Well, ma'am, kasi sa hotel din po, in and out po ang guests namin. And we cater, of course, to all nationalities, being it near the airport. So basically, what we control and what we have to make sure that we control are checking of their documentation. So namely, passports po. But you correctly noted, uh, Ms. Castro, na yung hotel na iyon, yung Go Hotel sa Baclaran, Paranaque, malapit sa airport. Okay. So alam natin kung paano yung airport ay nagiging daan para sa ganyang mga trafficking and prostitution, para sa ganyang mga illegal recruitment. And syempre, galing sa airport, lalapag talaga sa mga titirhan, especially if they are conveniently near the airport. So kayo po ba, wala pa kayong sinisimulang RFID, biometric, CCTV o iba pang precautions para protektahan yung mga potential or already actual victims nitong mga krimen sa loob ng premises ninyo? Ma'am, if I may step Yes, uh, uh, I'm Attorney Villanueva or Ms. Yes. Villanueva? Attorney Villanueva, please. I'm the general counsel for Roxaco Asia Hospitality Corporation. Uh, Ma'am, basically, we actually already have a lot of safeguards in place. Um, first and foremost, every time there's any guest who checks in, we try to secure a copy. Not try. We secure a copy of their passport. We retain it in our records. Um, this is regardless of whether the booking is made by walk-in uh, whether it's uh, by way of a travel agency or through online booking, through the online travel agencies like Agoda or Booking.com, who are also tied up with us. Um, now, once the guest is checked in, we actually issue them RFID cards, and that's what they use to access the floor that they're assigned to. Uh, it just so happened, ma'am, that in this particular case, we admit that the policy was not strictly followed by our personnel in that particular site, um, they could have, had they followed policy, the guests or third parties who would enter our hotel would have been more, I guess, tailored or they wouldn't have been able to go up to the higher floors. But in terms of our policies and procedures, we have always had them in place and we've made sure to supplement our security and our registration procedures. Maybe management should check kung yung mga staffer ninyo na bumabali sa policy are somehow nakikihati din sa corruption attending these uh, illegal activities, these crimes against women and children. Uh, Ma'am, in fact, we've already, we're currently undertaking internal investigations of all of the staff in Manila Airport Road during those uh, raids. Mr. Celestial, uh, kayo po ba ay nagsesecure din ng kopya ng passport? Kasi you have the um, this, uh, electronic precautions, kumukuha din ba kayo ng uh, hard copy ng, ng passport? Um, Madam Chairman, uh, yung mga visitors po namin, uh, uh, we ask them to register sa logbook uh, ng guard and uh, we ask them for... Uh, uh, valid IDs and uh, uh, like passport po. Uh, pa. passport. Um, back to Attorney Villanueva or Ms. Castro, uh, as I asked uh, Sina Attorney Choa earlier, are you also aware um, about uh, the crimes identified uh, under the Anti-Trafficking Act of 2003? Uh, yes, ma'am, we are aware. Thank you, Attorney. At is it also, in your opinion, is it generally accepted in the hotel and uh, condominium sector na kung yung isang building sa sector ninyo ay paulit-ulit na nire-raid pero tuloy-tuloy pa rin uh, yung prostitution uh, ay, that we can presume knowledge on the part of the owner or manager? Uh, your Honor, as, as a general rule, yes, we have... As a general rule? <laughs> uh, in, in our particular case, however, I would just like to point out that from the first raid, we already took measures to ensure that it doesn't happen again. 
And then by the second, when, when another raid was conducted in just the span of two weeks, uh, I think it involved two groups. We immediately checked out everyone who was in that floor. We, we took all measures to make sure that it doesn't happen again. But for other hotels who are not like you, na kahit na raid na sila, pero paulit-ulit yung ganitong mga krimen necessitating more raids from PNP or NBI, uh, we could presume na alam nila. Tama po ba yun? Uh, it, it could be presumed, them, yes. It could be, as a general rule. Yeah. I think so. I think it's it's reasonable. Sabi din po kasi ni Karina, yung isa naming witness, sa unang hearing, nakakapasok siyang madali sa mga hotel o condo, di siya hinaharang. Kasi pinabibihis daw siya ng desente, uh, ang expression nga nila parang attorney, para hindi harangin sa front desk. Pag mapatunayan na alam na ang underage prostitution ay nagaganap sa establishment, in addition to anti-trafficking, liable then sa ilalim ng Republic Act 7610. Alam po ba yon sa sa mga hotels at uh, condominiums? So I, I see the rep representatives from Go Hotel nodding. Alam din po ba ng Avida Hotels ito? Alam din po ng Avida Hotels. All right. Um, last but not the least uh, for this hearing. I began with the Bureau of Immigration. I'd like to end uh, before suspending uh, with our NGO, uh, well, and, and, and private sector, legal sector um, resource persons. Um, I'd like to ask, uh, address this question to Attorney uh, Kapunan. Uh, mukha pong maliban sa corruption, no, na umaalingasaw sa mga video at screenshots na uh, hinarap ko sa komiting ito. Isa din na lumalabas sa, na malinaw na sa usapin ng Pogo at yung mga social costs nito, trafficking, prostitution, illegal detention, illegal recruitment, etc. Kagaya ng maraming cancer sa ating lipunan, babae at sa kabata ang pinaka-vulnerable. So, could we please ask uh, Attorney Kapunan, tama ba ito? May malinaw po bang gender uh, dimensions and age dimensions and gender dimensions na lumalabas sa usapin ng Pogo. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Senator uh, and everybody here. Uh, I've been a practicing lawyer for 40 years and truly human trafficking, women trafficking is a crime against humanity. Unfortunately, in my 40 years of practice, I have not heard anybody convicted of human trafficking nor have there been any establishments closed. Uh, directly addressing your inquiry in aid of legislation, Madam Senator, uh, may I just make four very direct comments. Uh, first of all, uh, my personal view here is the issue of Pogo is a matter of political will. Uh, China itself does not allow Pogo operations. In fact, it has confined operations uh, gaming operations to a administrative territory which is Macau. Uh, the question therefore here is why are we allowing it in the Philippines? Uh, and we have seen from various inquiries of Dole and the Senate, of course, especially this committee and the Committee of Employment, that the root cause is really why is really the allowance of POGO operations in this community. So like with all evils, you don't cut the branches. You, you uproot the cause of the problem, which is allowance of POGO operations. So I hope that this committee will recommend in due time that the Pogo, POGOs should totally be banned and declared illegal in this country. My second comment here is, uh, it is apparent from three hours of this Senate investigation that the various government agencies do not appear to be talking to each other, uh, Madam Senator. And there appears to be lack of data sharing between the various government agencies. PAGCOR has data which it does not share, apparently with the uh, NBI PNP and the Bureau of Immigration, and the various government agencies do not appear to be sharing uh, data, which, uh, which uh, leads us probably to pastillas, no? because ignorance, ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is, uh, we're not blaming the people here, but maybe there should be 
a more active sharing of uh, of uh, data because you do not need to reinvent the wheel. I'm not suggesting the creation of another interagency committees because one of the evils in this country is there are too many interagency committees as we have seen from our disaster committees. Uh, instead of being quick to response, um, the opposite has been created. On the issue, on the third uh, comment, Madam Chair and Madam Senator, uh, I think like there is a law, 7610, which uh, specifically provides for a presumption of guilt. And I suggest that our human trafficking laws as regards uh, hotels, condominiums, uh, village associations, adopt a presumption of guilt. Uh, in 7610, when a, when a foreigner or a person of age is seen with a minor in, a, in an establishment, there already is a presumption of guilt. Uh, because what would you do with a 16-year-old or a, an 11-year-old or a 10-year-old in a bar? So the presumption of guilt is uh, provided by law uh, instead of a presumption of innocence. It is now up to, in this situation, Madam Chair, uh, since uh, you very aptly mentioned the uh, presumed knowledge, I think it's not only presumption of knowledge, it should be a presumption of guilt. And let the hotel or the condominium or the village association or in fact the owner of the residence Prove his innocence, and that way we will probably uh, we will probably make the owners of these business establishments or residences more exercise more the due diligence of a good father of the family as required by law. So uh, instead of shifting the presumption of guilt to the prosecutors. I think we shift the presumption uh, of innocence or proving their innocence to the owners of this establishment. That way, we can probably uh, demand a higher degree of uh, compliance. I think no amount of CCTV machines, no amount of uh, spending on security guards will solve this problem. It should hurt where it counts, and that is their pockets. So other than a joint and joint and several liability criminally, I think there should also be a civil sanction for owners of these establishments. Lastly, uh, the statistics will show that we are the fourth country, highest country in Asia, uh, where we have sex trafficking. And this has been compounded by uh, social media because there is now pornography online. You can now uh, order online, either uh, through cyber, through, there is now cyber pornography. There is also the use of the various applications. Uh, and, and so uh, I would suggest also from my experience, not only in my various NGOs, I used to be chair of the UN Women in the Philippines before it got uh, absorbed by another group. And uh, I have seen that the reason that this practice continues to perpetrate is the court congestion, uh, Madam Chair. There are not enough courts that will prosecute this. There are not enough uh, prosecutors that are assigned. There are not enough POW to assist uh, in the prosecution or defense of these cases. I therefore suggest, as a last suggestion, uh, the creation of special courts. The special creation of special courts so that a victim does not need to line up with 60 other cases in a court calendar, which are mostly really uh, possession of uh, or use of uh, drugs. So, bago pa matawag yung kaso mo, Eh, tapos na yung oras mo. And from my experience also as a practicing lawyer, if your case is called today, the next time it will be calendared is six months from now. Ganyan ka congested ang ating uh, courtroom. So my last suggestion, Madam Chair, and thank you for your time, is the creation of special courts 
that will address human trafficking. And perhaps we should expand the definition of human trafficking uh, to include not only uh, women, sex trade, not only cyber pornography, but uh, these uh, operations of POGO uh, is establishments. Thank you very much, and uh, let me take this opportunity. I have not said this public before, but thank you very much, Madam Senator, for safe space law. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to finally the passage of a, an absolute divorce law in the Senate. Maraming salamat po. And uh, I know it's very difficult for all of us here. We in the private sector fully support the efforts of government. I have worked closely with the NBI, the PNP, uh, and also our Bureau of Immigrations. Perhaps also, as you tackle the budget, I know it is not the uh, it is not initiated in the Senate, but in the House. When we're talking about uh, immigration, we're really talking about border controls, Madam Chair. 7,100 islands, how much do we pay for our Coast Guards? Let us not blame our airport officials because there are various points of entries into this country. In fact, uh, I would imagine that some of these women could even be smuggled in or entered, enter, this, uh, enter our coastline uh, in many various ways. So in the, same tra in the same sense that we smuggle in goods, we smuggle in human beings. And therefore, uh, perhaps uh, the appeal should be really for us to increase the budget, uh, not only of our immigration officials, but our Coast Guards. Uh, because uh, we are thinking of our Coast Guards as defending our territory. But we should perhaps think of our Coast Guards or our coastal authorities as defending our women and children uh, and defending against human trafficking which is more valuable than commodities. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you to uh, Attorney Kapunan. Uh, bago ko isuspend itong hearing with a few parting words, uh, my staff just um, saw something online na gusto kong itanong sa ating mga LGUs. Photo po ito, along one of our main thoroughfares, uh, advertising a readily available letter of no objection. Business permit, letter of no objection, business permit. In large Mandarin, I suppose, uh, script with contact information. Ano po ba ito? Pag, uh, pag ito po nakita ng Pasay City Government, uh, ano po yung magiging opinion nyo dito? Ano ba to? Para ba tong VUA na naman, the old, yung dating VUA, ito naman for a business permit? Letter of no objection business permit. Could you, you comment on this? This was seen along the Skyway northbound. Meron po ba dito ang pwede mag-identify kung nasan ito? Mukhang bagong billboard ito o bagong tarpaulin. If no one can identify where this is, pwede bang mag-comment ang uh, Pasay City LGU? Kung... Aware na ba kayo dito at uh, ano, yung magiging, ano yung magiging opinion ng isang city government dito sa Pilipinas tungkol sa ganyang advertising? Letter of no objection, business permit, readily available. That, yun yung ibig sabihin ng isa sa Chinese script na iyon. Yes, Ms. Baliktar. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, we're not in the position to comment on that. Because we as social workers are uh, only limited to our role as social workers is only limited to uh, assisting the IACAT in the rescue operations and providing interventions for the victims of trafficking. As to that uh, picture, I guess it's the business permit and license office should be the one to be asked. Thank you. Fair enough, ma'am. We can ask that of uh, the business licensing and permit office of LGUs uh, in the next hearing or hearings. Pero nakakagulat talaga. I don't think anyone has any business putting up uh, a big billboard or tarpaulin like that regarding 
a an official document na dapat gobyerno lang natin ang nag issue pati sa mga LGUs, and using a, an official language that is not an official language in our republic. Hindi siya in Filipino, ni hindi siya Ingles, but I presume Mandarin, so a, a Chinese language. So we will look into that further. So um, in uh, suspending uh, this morning's hearing, uh, just some uh, parting words. Huh? Traidor sa bayan, binenta tayo. We've sold our borders for Chinese money. Kaya nakakapasok ang mga trafficked women at illegal na pogo workers. I'm sorry, hindi talaga kapanipaniwala na hindi alam ng mga BI officials ito. Kung hindi man kayo sangkot, again, I'm sorry, natutulog lang kayo sa pansitan. We will call for further investigation to present more facts. Hindi pwedeng nagiging pugad tayo ng krimen dahil ginawa ng welcome committee ang Bureau of Immigration natin ng mga Chinese nationals na karaniwan ay pogo workers. This is a billion peso enterprise pero bariya ang napupunta sa ating mga immigration officers. May kumikita dito ng milyon-milyon. May padrino itong mga illegal na pogo operators kaya ang kakapal ng mga mukha nila. Ang nagiging biktima, mga babae at mga bata, kagaya ni na Ivy at Karina. And we will get to the bottom of this. So, with uh, thanks all around, maraming salamat sa lahat ng mga resource persons and what Attorney Kapunan said is a difficult hearing, but with thanks to all of you, uh, I will suspend the hearing until the next hearing. Salamat po. We would like to request our resource persons and other attendees to please stay put as lunch will be served. Thank you.